Love her. We have an amazing story about your um, your buddy, Tim Dillon. We love Tim Dillon here. And years ago on Red Bar, we concocted this fantasy that Tim Dillon doesn't have a home. And uh, I, I want to fill you in on what I've heard about Tim Dillon. Why is Tim Dillon even on our radar? Tim Dillon's one of the good ones, they say, right? Tim Dillon rules. He's great. And I understand if you saw him from your angle, I would say the same thing. Um, but the stories behind the scenes that I've heard, and listen, uh, I'm just as in the dark kind of as you are. Uh, here's how I know it's horrific. The stories people tell me about Tim Dillon behind the scenes, comedians, friends of his, they tell me these stories. Um, they say, Mike, it is so bad that I can't even get into detail because I don't want to relive it. And Mike, trust me, Tim Dillon, I wish I could tell. They say this to me. I wish I could tell you. I'm telling you, keep a safe distance. He's a horrible person. This is what they say. And I go, no. I go, no, come on. And these are people who don't, who think everyone, these are people who, oh, I love Mark Norman. Oh, I love this one. I love that one. They're all great. So why would they say this? Multiple people tell me this. Whitney Cummings. Is having problems with Tim Dillon? Yes. That's an assumption. No, no, no. Listen, I got this absolutely right. Um, and months ago on the show, I said, you know, this Tim Dillon, it's very funny. He's always in an Airbnb. He's always in a hotel. And why can't he get a house? And everyone said, well, he used to be a real estate uh, or person or something like this. What did he used to do? He used to work in real, est real estate. Something like that. And he owes a lot of money. He's in a lot of debt. But... Here's what's so confusing. Someone this in the is, chat said, I did a podcast with Annie Lederman and before, and she said he is a scumbag. See this? And this is what I mean, and they say it to you in a different way. They don't go, oh, Tim Dillon's the best. What a scumbag. Ha, ha. No, it's, dude, he's a scumbag. Seriously. Like, be careful. And you're going, what did he do? And no one will tell you because it's that dark. <laughs> And so when you see Tim Dillon, it doesn't add up. And that's where our questions come in. You go, okay, here's this character. And then you add this lore to him. And then you add these other factors. He doesn't have a house. He's sleeping out of Airbnbs. There's all these rumors about how he's in debt. But here's where it gets uh, interesting. He's making how much money per month on Patreon? It's public knowledge on his Patreon drills. How much is he making per month on Patreon? Plus ads, plus this. What kind of debt could he not be out of? already you know uh he it, makes 85k okay a here month. you go eighty five thousand dollars a month he makes on patreon alone he also runs ads on his show he also sells merch so he's making enough money to dig himself to dig anyone really out of any hole i mean you watch like a movie where they're trying to kill nicholas cage and you're like what are they trying to kill him for he owes someone 10 grand you know, so I've never even seen a movie where you couldn't get out of it with $84,000. Every movie, it's for $20,000. You owe me $40,000, you fucking threw. Um, so if People he's making- People saying he gave shady mortgages during the 08 housing crisis. Yeah, well, how much is he in he debt? Millions? subprime mortgages to people who can't afford okay, them. But does but that have to do with his? If you're making $84,000 a month, you should be able to rent any apartment in this city, no matter how much debt you have, no matter how bad your credit is, right? I think so he lives out of airbnbs and uh in these weird rentals in hotels and stuff and you always see him and um he really likes it lavish this is what i love about it he has a taste for the finer meats <laughs> he has a taste for the finer things and he's this big fat guy and he's got exquisite taste and i kind of all of this would be fine if there weren't these shady mysteries behind and even if there are, listen, is that even so bad? You know, it's almost the secret that I'm after here. You know, I don't even think Tim's really that bad. It's the secret. Like, what, is, yes, what, he, exactly. what could he have done? I, I feel I, like I like him in general. Yeah, I kind of like him. So, um, but he is up to but something. But here, so we've been making fun of him, and I wish we had tape of this. We've been saying, like, oh, he rents these Airbnbs, and then he just trashes them. He's a pig. He doesn't trash them, like, cool like a rock star. He's such a slob, a vile pig. 
You know, there's just dirty dishes everywhere. Wasn't there something with him where he had like old pizza boxes in his room? Yeah, there was something, was that right? Him? So <laughs> this actually so happened. It's like we willed it into existence. And the title of this next segment, it's great. I can't wait to do this. It's called Tim Dillon Destroys a Beautiful Airbnb Property that He Rented. And boy, this story is fun. It's been made very public. Well, it had to be made public because they outed Tim. They left him a bad review. Where does this story start? Do we have video of Tim? I think Tim tells the story. Yes. He, first, this so is great. What, should we hear it from his point of view first or should we say what happened Let's first? Let's hear it from his point of view. Okay. And then we've got the true story of what happened here. And man, is it going to be funny? There's nothing funnier. Like, you know, when Mountain, I love a slob. I love a caught slob. Busted. It's so embarrassing to be caught being a slob. It's one thing, again, Aerosmith, Motley Crue, they trash a hotel room, they leave condoms everywhere, they break the windows. That's not them being slobs. That's being them being crazy. Tim Dillon is being kicked out of Airbnbs because he's disgusting. He's being a subhuman. <laughs> he's going for weeks at a time flies everywhere like he's living in squalor and probably stealing and selling items <laughs> i don't know but we're going to show you everything that we do know here today do we have any really messy piggy music pig music sounds maybe barnyard with pig in the background or something like that and what's so funny about this is you know should he even be on red bar no and that's why it's shameful tim you got no business being on Red Bar. You need to take some damn leadership here. The reason you're on Red Bar, if you got, you're a clout chaser, you're a clout farmer, okay? You co-sign comedians that you know are trash, that you make fun of. You pretend you're friends with Andrew Schultz when I know, I've heard you talk shit about Andrew Schultz. You hate Andrew Schultz. And you're promoting him on Twitter. Oh, go, you know, go. What, nobody goes after it on so you are you clout, clout farm, you clout chase, and the deceit, we cannot take deceit. All of this would be fine, but you know what? You've gotten these little things that you're doing here. And um, if you want to be set free from this red bar, you got to start uh, turning your life around. Let's hear from Tim himself what happened, and he had to do this. He was forced to tell this disgraceful story, and you could see the shame on his face. And, you know, he shame eats. This is another guy who pretends he's on a Peloton bike all day, eating green <laughs> all day. I wonder, well, what the problem must be his in his DNA. Uh, 5130. Yeah, 5130. I love these guys. Ethan Klein's another of these guys. I eat healthy. I exercise all the time. Yep. <laughs> must be some weird uh, curse that was put on you by a gypsy. All right, let's see what happens here. Uh, we're going to go a little bit later. He's going to tell the Tim Dillon show. And again, Tim, we're doing this out of love, and we need those secrets revealed. I am dying, and I am willing to pay people for info on Tim Dillon's secrets. And as a gay, he should understand. Here we go. Let's hear. It sells for meat on the street. Before that, I would like the deviled egg. <laughs> Is there a way that we can do Cheers that? Cheers, everybody, to a wonderful we're all living at the end of summer. Pigging. And I'd like a little before the end. High water. We had a big problem with Airbnb, and I've been a big proponent of Airbnb, and Airbnb is a billion-dollar business, and it's valued at how much? I mean, they just had an IPO, right? Oh, Airbnb is... Uh, you know, the other thing we're doing here, Airbnb is not to blame. The people he rented from are not to blame. He's to blame. He got kicked out of an Airbnb for being a pig. Oh, yeah, this is why we're showing it. Uh, he's lying about all this. <laughs> and he's sending people to attack the Airbnb. He's basically the piranha, the ally, Alexan <laughs> ally Alexander of the comedy world, leading an insurrection on this Airbnb, even though there are no evidence to back up that it's their fault. And Tim Dillon was booted off of Airbnb, and it was such an embarrassing public boot off that now he is lying and pretending that they were the problem. We're going to get to the bottom of well, it when he recorded this episode he wasn't kicked off yet remember? oh yeah this so we've got it all bad review jules and i this has been our top story this month we've got it 
all. Okay, so there is no other journalistic, um, you know, a company out there that has all this together like this. What you're about to see is every in and out of the Tim Dillon Airbnb story. And again, Tim, I'm shaking my head going, how did you end up here? I got to do a whole story about this. Imagine. It's shameful. <laughs> so let's see. Without further ado, Tim's side, which is going to make when we hear the truth, it's going to be even worse. Watch this. Uh, this massive, uh, I mean, it is just, it's $68 a share. Mm. I mean, it's it's. $33 billion valuation yeah. as of November 30th yeah. for Airbnb. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now it's targeting, uh, that is December now, 7th, $42 billion yeah. variation for Airbnb. And we had a problem with Airbnb. Uh-oh. We had a real issue with Airbnb. I have done nothing but be respectful mm -hmm. to the people, to the homes that I rent. I have done nothing. You understand? I oh, do not get wait a minute. Speak up, sir. Speak up because his little co-host here, interesting guy. I like this guy. What's his story, huh? This little guy. This little silent helper outer of Tim. He like follows him around with chapstick and a purse all day. I feel like I don't know anything about him. Have you seen the show Veep? It's like that guy who follows around the Veep. He's constantly around Tim. Whatever Tim needs, this guy, he's the fixer. <laughs> and Tim must have, this guy must have shot someone like Quentin Tarantino in Dust Till Dawn. And Tim got him out of it, and now this guy owes him, you know? <laughs> and Tim will, uh, you know, turn him into the police or something if he doesn't stop helping him out. I don't know that guy's story. Does anyone know who that guy is? I like him. He's I cool. I think these guys are cool. All right, let's see what happens here. Reviews on Airbnb because I treat people with respect. Now, let's describe. Let's describe some This of is issues. a fun story. Number one, I went. I was told I was going to a luxury compound in Joshua Tree. Luxury means something very specific to me. Okay, it doesn't mean necessarily stylized, high concept, and artistic. It means luxury. It means fluffy couches and nice carpets. Luxury. I feel luxurious. Okay, yeah, that's very. And it's so funny. It's like, but why? You know, you're. So, why don't you feel luxurious about your weight or something like that? First. <laughs> I like this. Somebody in the chat says that guy spends 80% of his day on the dark web. Wow. <laughs> Chilling. That's a new way to look at it. I didn't look at it like that. I look at it like, yeah, he like, he, yeah. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, Dust Till Dawn, see the movie. All right, let's see. It's his staff. Sounds. Okay, let's see what Tim says. You understand? Yes. Um, we went to a, a nice thing in Joshua Tree which is the place where all people in the tech industry go to take mushrooms and people that work for ICE go and have, you know, to take DMT and figure out how to build stronger cages to put kids in. You know, it's great. It's for people having revelations. So we go to Joshua Tree, which is really just, it's a litter box for drug addicts. Let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. It's a litter box for drug addicts. And I know that a lot of people like it, but that's what it is. And that's who you are. So we go to this litter box for drug addicts and they, you know, and they've stuck a little house on the edge of the cliff and yeah, we yeah. can all go see the desert and, you know, take a bunch of drugs and see Satan or whatever. And um, we get into the house. The house, the, the furniture in the house is like, it's all, it's all, of course, these are two white women. I believe they're lesbians. I don't want to uh, say that they're lesbians. I don't know, but their names are stupid. Like one of them's name is Mila. It's like, it's a stupid name. You're a ridiculous person. So here's, and I've been through this. You know, making fun of lesbians is a lose lose, even as a gay. Huge mistake. So he's talking about this very public thing that it happened with Airbnb, and he's about to tell you what happened here. Uh, but he starts getting personal. He starts revealing the people. They're lesbians. Let's get them. Do you want to show the Airbnb so everyone can picture yeah, it? Yeah, let's do that. And then we'll go back to Tim's story. So let's look at Tim's beautiful Airbnb. And uh, this Facebook one here? Yes. Here is the actual Airbnb. Now, Tim's made this very public. So everybody's been able oh, yeah, to. Oh, yeah, there's a link to it. I hope it still works. Yeah, let's see. Everyone's been able to find it. Uh, this first one? Yeah. All right, so here we go. Vacation rentals, high-end retreat with eight private acres, pool, and a spa. This is $1,700 a night. Ooh, piggy, fancy. He needs it all. 
So Tim Dillon saw this list and he goes, that's my kind of place. And boy, this is like where Moby goes to get like a massage. <laughs> it is pristine. You know, one wrong move by Tim Dillon and this whole place is over. <laughs> Tim Dillon trips. God forbid everything here is as delicate as, you know, fine china. It's uh, This would be like if you... Put Tim Dillon in a room where they stack all the champagne glasses on top for a wedding and they pour it from the top. <laughs> Bad idea. Keep Tim away from delicate object. All right? It's going to be bad for everybody. So he sees this and he goes, that is a perfect place for me to kick my feet up and fart and cook and have cookouts. And I mean, this place couldn't be, uh, you know, fancier and more precious you know, it's a beautiful place, but this is where, so he'll spend three days here, gets kicked out for something, and then he'll spend three days at another place. He'll spend four days there, four days there, and he's running on borrowed time. And borrowed money! And it can't be funny! Beastie Boys. Uh, here's the kitchen. Beautiful kitchen. There's nothing unbeautiful about this place. Great place. New, brand new Breville. About $799 countertop espresso maker prosumer you know a beautiful beautiful place um and tim went in there like a bull in a china shop and just wrecked it and here are the before pictures all right so you see all these let's just go through these so you could get very accustomed to the place he was in now imagine this guy walking through with his dirty old shirt stomping through the house blowing cigar smoke everywhere laughing it up about stocks, falling into cactuses. You know, I don't even know if he could fit through a hallway that narrow. He probably hulked through that hallway and created a cutout as he went down. You know, one of that old gag. Here, look, even the, look at the details, the finishes on this house. I mean, everything <laughs> they're showing. This is... But what drove him to pick this? Well, he's a I feel fancy, like in his fancy episode, person. He s tries to pass it off like someone else booked it for exactly. Him, well, yeah, he's shitting on this place, but it's like you picked it. That's the part of this story that doesn't make sense. It. Oh, oh my God! No wonder the chair was reported broken, Tim. Uh, this is more of a toothpick for you than a chair. So imagine Tim Dillon sitting on this little chair. Oops! Snap. $3,000, please. Or even if he didn't pick it, he demanded, I want the most high-end retreat. Look at that this. They, you yes, offer, exactly. They literally Googled high-end well, retreat. This, is another, of one of the, high this is another one of those stories about the golden goose. It's Veruca Salt. It's your classic tale of the man who wanted it all <laughs> and became victim to his, uh, his wishes. You know, the greed, the three wishes. The monkey's paw, I mean, it's the timeless tale of the man who wanted it all and how it backfires. Here, this is the brush that guy uses to brush Tim when he's, <laughs> you know, to get the fleas out of him. Uh, let's see what else happens here. Oh! oh, Tim destroyed these. What the hell are these? Donut holes? Ugh, they taste like citrus. What the fuck? One star. Fruit was fruit and not donut hole. You know, I mean, come on. Um, all the candles ended up being melted, and that was just from Tim's body heat. See these outlets? Even in the beds, they have these custom... You know how expensive that is to do custom circles like that? Plateless outlets like that? That's like an extra 10 grand just for that detail, right? Wow. You know, he was a luxury boy. Now, thanks he to... He requested that detail specifically. Yes. He won't stay in a place without it. Now, here's what you won't see anywhere else. We've got the before and afters. Thanks to a listener on the case... Henry W. We've got this incredible before and after from Henry W. of the Bring Back Group. This is one of our very own. And uh, he posts this. These are never before seen. So Tim Dillon could stuff it with his stories. Newly released photos showing the aftermath of Tim Dillon's stay. Would you like to see these? Let's see some of these before and after. You recognize this place. Okay. So here is, um, wow, and wow, quite a mess here. So here is the before. And you remember this place, guys, right? This beautiful 
cactus, this wood thing on the wall. Oh, and there's that chair. Let's look at the... Oh, Tim. So, yes, a giant hole in the wall. I don't know what happened here. I mean, this is really... Holy horrific. Everything in this photo completely destroyed. Here, you can see that here, a better view. Wow. Unbelievable. Let's go to the next photo here and see what we've got. Oh, okay, the kitchen. Sure, the kitchen. So uh, the kitchen started out as. This is a segment called Started Out As. and uh, Almost called. Almost called. All right, so here's this. And the kitchen started out as this. And let's see, uh, after Tim Dillon's stay, let's just see what we got here. Oh, no, Tim, what have you done? Look at this. So, yeah, the oven is, you know, destroyed. It looks like it's, uh, you know, uh, from a soup kitchen. Oh, my God, there's baked beans spilled all over the counter. Look at this. What a mess. And, uh, you know, oh, wow, somebody has broke through the actual drywall, and <laughs> you can see the exposed pipes everywhere. Oh, Tim. He didn't do one day. He used every dish they had. You know, for each bite of steak, he used a different dish. Look at this. The sink completely filled up and uh, shelves falling off. I mean, this is really wild. Look, everything got chair just thrown into the kitchen. Oh so God, he didn't Tim. do nothing. All right. Oh, no. The bathroom. Oh, the beautiful bathroom. Okay, let's start here. The beautiful bathroom. All right, it was all put together. Look at that. And, ooh, that is certainly a disaster. Look at this. Feces all over the wall. The toilet looks like Candyman. It's exploded. There is bags and bags. Now, this is interesting. Look <laughs> at the bags and bags. What is this stuff? I mean, that is crazy. Look, the is whole... Is that stuff the... he used while he was there? I don't know. It's like bags and bags of printer ink everywhere. <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. Um, look at even here's the before the toilet paper roll. Look at that nice, clean, brand new roll. Go here, cut to here. He's even gotten feces. You could see uh, he's got his hand covered in shit. He went to reach for the toilet paper roll. He's got shit everywhere. Um, it's uh, startling. And uh, even the shower head has been ripped off the wall. Everything is a disaster. And I can't believe he's he's saying that he did nothing. Interesting. We're going to go back. Now that you've seen the damage, let's hear the review. Should we read the review from Instagram yes. themselves? Um, you can go the to review. The, yeah, the review. It's on, uh, we had to put this on Imgur. Well, so, this is just, yeah. The so review this is that their they review. Left him. This is the review that they left him. <laughs> uh, December 2020. Very bad guest. Broke our bar stools. Clogged our toilets. Broke our cactus. Left our beautiful home we worked so hard on a complete disaster. Yes. You hear that, folks? That's the real a review. A complete from his page. disaster. The real review. Now, I want to show you before we go into Tim's side of things, can we read Tim's review? Look at this. This was Tim's review, right? Oh, no, of that's them. just another Oh, okay. Give me Tim's, um, review, Tim's review because is... this is chilling. So you heard that. That's the guy. Or that's, uh, and by the way, look at Tim. This is Tim as he knows he's on Red Bar. Okay, so this is a very difficult situation. I understand. Uh, I can explain. I can explain through a series of lie that will be bought by my constituents immediately. He's basically like the mayor of Toronto now, in my eyes. You want to hear Tim's um, you review? You just have to go to the Airbnb page. I just sent it to you. Uh, okay. Check this out. We found Tim's review. So I want you all to know this because Tim loved this place. And we're going to hear very differently from him coming up. Where is... Uh, you just have to it, go to the reviews yeah, and then yeah, you'll see, see which one's from him. Okay. Justin. Mayor. Right there, Tim. Oh, it's... Tim. Look at what Tim said. Truly breathtaking, one of a time, lifetime property, perfect for a retreat, truly amazing. So he loved this place before they, because you have to leave. What happens, um, leaving a review on Airbnb is similar to a Western draw. You both have to. <laughs> yes. So you, this is how it works. You both leave your review and then Airbnb lights them up both live once you're both done. So if one person says, 
he was terrible, then the other person can't go, oh yeah, well you were terrible. You both write a blind review and then Airbnb reveals them. And it's like that game where you got a 10 on your head or you were guessing the color blue or something. <laughs> and uh, so Tim loved the place until he found out they hated him. Now he's got a different story. Are you guys ready to hear Tim lie? Ooh, do we hate liars <laughs> on Red Bar. Ooh, piggy, piggy, lie, lie. Piggy, piggy, lie, lie. And believe me, Whitney Cummings is watching this. Annie Lederman is watching this. Finally, somebody's going after him. He's probably left Whitney's house a disaster many Yeah, times. probably. He um once wiped his ass with one of Whitney uh, Cummings' um, pool chairs. Those long <laughs> ones that... The white padded ones that you can lay on. What is this? Ah, uh, like Godzilla would do. All right, let's see uh, what he claims happened. I don't know. Those pictures, you know, 40%, I'm getting a word here, 40% of our audience believes in the pictures. They think they're real. <laughs> I know. 40%. I think by the end they... If by the end, well, no, but by the end they'll be even more confused. All right, here we go. Tim Dillon's rationale <laughs> this better be good tim one of them's name is mila it's like it's a stupid name you're a ridiculous person okay <laughs> you accuse me of breaking a cactus how do you even do that you goofy bitch shut the fuck up <laughs> wow okay, you slob oh so the pot calling the kettle instapot the instant pot calling the kettle grease wow so how do you even break a cactus? I don't know. You walk backwards against it, Tim. I mean, you look like you could break everything in that house from a sneeze. So, yes, I buy this story. Let's hear more. Walk into your fucking house, which you can't even sit on the fucking floor. I got fat people here. They're 400 pounds. How are they going to sit on your cowhide chair that's a little thin thing of fucking leather? What are we supposed to do? This guy's 900 pounds. What are we going to do here? Okay? Every piece of furniture can't sodomize the guest. You have to have some fucking chair that works, like an actual fucking chair. Throw a beanbag in there. Now, here he is. Remember, we just read his review. Amazing place, stunning, beautiful. And also, he booked this place. He saw the same pictures we all did, with the little chairs, with the dainty everything. And he goes, stunning retreat booked. 1700 a night, that's nothing. My stupid idiot fans will give me that immediately. And now he's pretending like it's all gay and it all sucks. Why? Because you guys are all part of the alt-right. You're part of QAnon. QAnon would... He's embarrassed? You loved all that dainty furniture. And now you're calling it stick? Some fucking chair that works. Like an actual fucking chair. Throw a beanbag in there. Okay, not everybody's a 90 foot, 90 pound lesbian on ayahuasca that can perch on a fucking birdcage for the whole night. Okay, you freaks. See, this to would all be funny if he went there and it was all a surprise. Remember, he signed off. Oh, a little tiny, 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 tiny chair. I love that. I will give it. And by the way, it's $1,700. You're looking at the pics. No, it was over two thousand. Oh, when, well, it says seventeen hundred and nine oh, on the really? page. Yeah. Well, the first time I looked at. Well, was. maybe with taxes. The fuck up, talking to you. People are gonna rent your house that are actual they people that need actual it. furniture to actually sit. Not everything's a fucking trip to hyperspace. There's actual three D reality that some of us have to fucking live in. So we went there. Here's his story, and then we're gonna tell you the real. And story. I was not thrilled with the decor and i i told you that it was very uh white and you know these white bitches they just steal native american culture and i'm not even a culturally appropriation guy but they just steal this fucking culture right. they put these weird little uh buffalo head skull and you tell me because uh, i know we're gonna jump around here so you can tell mm -hmm. me if i keep playing or jump around because i know he uh he gets into it here uh, he's trying to be funny 56 25 you know and i appreciate it. he's trying to be funny it's something that these other podcasters don't do but in that, he's also, you know, a lot of this stuff is for comedic effect. So we just want to cut to the chase and give you the story here. 5625. 5625. And he is being funny. But again, he also is being a disgrace to our nation. Okay? <laughs> so let's hear some more. I mean, listen, I get it. I got Jaja Tag the Shrooms. But some people want to have a nice meal there. We treated that house like it had never been treated with wholesome 
American food. We went to Vons in the desert and we got burgers and Bush's baked beans. Wait, baked bean? I swear in those pictures, I saw a can of exploded beans everywhere. Yeah, didn't the review say something? About I think that? that's what where Tim they got it from. Yeah, Tim Dillon, uh, what he did is you put a bunch of cans of beans in the fireplace and then fell asleep. <laughs> and like the hobo he is, they all burst and the whole place was covered in bean. I mean, imagine you walk into your beautiful million dollar home. I showed you those outlets, right? Imagine that being covered in baked bean. You would never sleep again. I mean, just <laughs> to find somebody who could even clean that, you need a, you can't just call the friendly maids on Yelp. You got to get a specialist in there. So he really destroyed basically an art. This would be like if he got, if he was eating and backed up into the Mona Lisa and broke through the, the canvas. Yes. <laughs> Whoops. Well, then it shouldn't have been there. What is this shit? Canvas? So thin. It should be made out of rubber, so I spring back. You know, you destroyed a piece of artwork, historic art. And we cooked baked beans, and yes, beans explode when they're oh, hot. Yeah. Wow. Whose fault is that? But you I didn't this is the thing, then clean them. So here's the thing. He started making beans in a microwave, probably put the whole can in there, and then the thing exploded, and then he leaves it. You know, it would be like when... Uh, James Fritz, Earl. Oh, James Fritz. He'd be our co-host. We'd be doing the show. And after the show would end, I would go into the guest bathroom and I'd see if there's piss all over the seat. And I go, James, what the fuck? He goes, I'm sorry. I'm fucking dry, man. He's paying. Sometimes it's shoot. Okay. But why didn't you clean it afterwards? There's that. So the excuse is, yes, I understand how things get dirty. We all make a mess. The, the thing is, an adult has to clean the mess after to cancel out the mess. You can't just go, things get dirty. I took a shit. I clogged the toilet. Then unclog it. It's somebody else's house. He never addresses anything. He just talks about the beans and the food that they yeah. ate. And he never brings up any of the other things like the cactus. And by the, the way, how embarrassing. Toilet. He had to bring up, you know, meanwhile, every other Instagram is eating lobster at the Fairmont. Eating scallops right now. At the uh, fourth season. And now, because they said that the beans had burst, he they has to. They didn't say that, oh. though. Oh, okay. So, he just said this. That's what he's bringing up to distract from his true crime. So he's pretending that it, it was, because he knows his audience is a bunch of QAnon, white trash, insurgent people, right? Insurrectionists. <laughs> like, literally 90% of his audience thinks he's like a QAnon guy. <laughs> and by the way, his favorite show growing up was InfoWars. Imagine that. He Tim Dillon is not, I mean, really, that's his audience. So he knows. And by the way, he wants to be, he's like Donald Trump, where Donald Trump is this rich, extravagant man, and all of his fans are like, you know, hillbillies. So he has to pander them, and that's what he's doing. He's going, we had baked beans, guys. Come on, they won't let us have an old-fashioned cookout. <laughs> no, no, no. It was probably pieces of yellowtail everywhere. But he can't say that because then you'd go, well, they have a point. <laughs> you know, it was probably, yeah, A5 Wagyu <laughs> everywhere. Okay. They didn't have baked beans and, <laughs> oh, yeah, we had, that's him pandering just like Donald Trump. Here. Uh, yeah. Whose fault is that? I didn't come up with the idea for the bean. Uh, another guy blew it. Look at this guy. Insurrections. Keep using that work, Mike. LM. <laughs> You tried oh, to. Yes, he earlier was like, maybe stay off the politics. Mark. Yeah, but he tried to diss me instead of about. word, he wrote work. Uh huh. So you blew it on your thing, and uh, now everyone's going to make fun of you. So he's one of these guys who thinks the Capitol thing was good and cool. That guy sucks. What's his name? Joey Montana. <laughs> and what is he known for around here? What does he do? You said that guy sucks. Tell well, you. tell us. What has he done? He's just I would love member. to hear. What has Joey Montana done? <laughs> Another guy who went after me messed it up. It's the worst. You know, you got to slow yourself down when you go after me publicly in front of everybody I know. He's been a problem all day. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah. He's the guy who thought Tenet was good. Like, oh, wow. Times. He's two for two. Keep saying insurrection, keep saying insurrection, keep using that work. Ah, fuck, 
damn it. Well, send. <laughs> you know. He's done everything, they said. Please ban him. Oh, wow. Some people want him censored. I'd never. Uh, he's been a freak all day. I noticed him arguing earlier. We got, oh, they all hate you. Do you see this? You're the loser. I guess we're all libs now because you suck. Arrest him. They really lit up when we started going after him. And this is how these people go. You know, they can't take it. Uh, let's see, Joey Montana. I don't think it's good. I also don't think it's an insurrection LMAO. Oh, that's where you, that's where your point lay. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. So every time I say insurrection, you were actually getting it. It wasn't an insurrection. It was a peaceful protest. That's what you're doing? That's uh, lamer than I thought. Uh, it was a peaceful protest. Takes all kinds. This right is a guy. Guys? We had a couple guys get mad that I laid a fish to rest on the last show. They did? Too. Oh, yes. Who? Uh, Jules, I did, couldn't even show you. You'd be shocked. You wouldn't be able to sleep. Let him stay, someone says. <sighs> oh, is that Danny Woodward? Let him stay. Hang him. Baked Alaska. I like Baked Alaska is arrested right now. And I'm going to actually uh, testify against all these people when I'm done with this. Jeez, you know what I'm going to do? They're going to come and have us killed. I don't care. You know what I'm going to do? Anyone who ever gives me trouble like that, I'm going to go to the police and say, I have heard you were planning things to kill the president. <laughs> okay. It's my word against yours. You'll be in a holding cell for a month. <laughs> I'm kidding the government. I kid the government. All right, let's go back to Tim Dillon. It's about his baked beans. Can you believe I said the word insurrection? And that triggered. Remember when you guys hated triggered snowflakes? Yikes, what a world. Yep. Even Mersh is handling this better. <laughs> Think about that. All right, let's see what Tim Dillon says next um, about his disgusting shit and diarrhea filled romp <laughs> on an Airbnb. <laughs> <laughs> they explode with that. And then oh. we wanted uh, Gorton's fish. We got the Gorton's fish, mm. which is very nice. Uh, the breaded, pre-breaded Gorton's fish and some tartar sauce. So we, so baked beans, Gorton's fish with tartar sauce, cheeseburgers, and then seven pints of ice cream so we could try. Yeah. Just have a little ice cream testing. And we left a few dishes. In the sink. In the sink. A pot of exploded beans. Yeah. Wow. An extra tartar sauce I didn't even use that I said you can use. Um, some ice cream. I mean, the smell of the some house was ice fish cream? and bean. Yeah. Wait, the smell of the house was fish and bean. <laughs> Imagine you come home. But and he's by the way, to this grotesque food thing, so that he doesn't have to. Yes, talk about exactly the about the actual stuff broken the stuff in the toilet. Yes, is the main thing he hasn't brought up anything about. about the toilet yet. He's trying to fool you into believing this was a food-only incident, a food fight. <laughs> no, no, no. This was vile. This was disgusting. This was toilet-related stuff. It was shit. It was feces everywhere. Handprints. Um. And it clearly said, I mean, here's the thing. On the Airbnb, even before this, the number first rule in their policy, no fish, no beans. Yes. This is an art piece. This is a gallery. <laughs> Do not bring food. No food, it said. Food and beverage, and then a sign over it. And he said, oh, yeah? And then he had, you don't eat fish and beans together, by the way. I'll tell you that right now. That's not a combo. You know, barbecue beans, baked beans, and fish. I don't Fish sticks? <laughs> Sounds like you went on a psychotic romp, you know, where you lost it. And you were, uh, you know, and this guy, you're dragging him through the mud. You probably ruined his credit, too. But that's not my fault. You can have a cleaning crew. She's like, the cleaning crew complained. What, what is it? My fat maid over there probably complained. Yeah, well, here, but, we haven't even gotten into the gay element here. Fish and bean is code for no mass gay orgy. What were we just watching where the guy lets his assistant stay at the house and he comes back to a full gay orgy and they're all fucking each other? Some show. Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, Wolf of Wall Street. There's yeah. a famous scene from Wolf of Wall Street. Well, what are you looking at me like? It's so cringe. No, I was trying to think if there's something oh, else, Oh, okay, too. yeah. Remember that in Wolf of Wall... Was it Wolf of Wall Street? I think. 
I don't know. There's some. There's three or four films where it's a the assistant. Theme. They're like it's a TV. Trope. Yeah, like hey, you could stay at my house, watch my house. Even Lloyd did this basically on uh, season yes, that eight was of what Entourage. We were just watching, but so there was another one times. where the guy was fucking all over the place. Calm everywhere. Remember. <laughs> You know, fish and bean. Yes, Entourage was probably what we just saw. Entourage had that. Yeah, Lloyd uh, threw a whole gay man's, you know, uh, gay man's review, you know, at the place. Imagine walking in and seeing gay people fucking on your furniture with baked bean, filling people's asses with baked bean just so it shoots out as a big party trick, you know, and they're doing all this stuff. Believe me, the fish is like a stag party for gays. <laughs> Let's see what happens here. Uh, let's see more of his lies. It's like, well, why are they complaining? They're supposed to be cleaning. Their job is to clean. Okay? So this bitch then texts me. She goes, our cleaning crew had a heart attack, LOL. So I'm like, okay. And then she goes, but please give us a good review so we stay on Airbnb. So here's the deal with Airbnb. We nope. review each other. We don't know what we've said. See, see, it's see. I think that is... He knows that his initial review is going to be outed. He has to have some explanation. So he came up with a plan, and now he claims that the uh, people begged him for a good review. Well, okay, I've got an answer to that. Why didn't you just say no? Do you not think for yourself? Since when is Tim Dillon controlled by two lesbians, folks? You know, talk about yeah, a weakness you here. You really want so this much. as president? He can't even handle his Airbnb. You know, if you hated it so much, why would they force your hand into writing this amazing review and you said it was stunning? If you're going to come reach out to me and ask me for a good review and acknowledge that the cleaning crew was like, oh, we got to wash some dishes. I'm like, okay, they're not mad. We didn't do anything. There's some dishes in the sink, but it is what it is. I paid a $400 cleaning fee. You stupid cunt. Yeah, yeah. Jonan Mila. You fucking pigs. I'll burn your fucking house down. There you go. Okay, <laughs> Tim Dillon's first time. I'll burn your fucking house down. And, you know, he sent all of his fans after these people. They're really afraid. So Airbnb they has... privated their Instagram. They privated their Instagram. Airbnb has terminated Tim Dillon from their platform. Now, I want to talk about... I mentioned this earlier. His fans are calling this cancel culture. Tim trashes an Airbnb... Cost them thousands of dollars, then says, I'll burn your house down, you lesbian pigs. The service says, okay, you're banned. And it's cancel culture at its finest. PC police out of control. You know, it used to be you committed a crime. You did the time. Yes. Now I mean, it's do the time, do the wine. Have gotten bad reviews on Airbnb before. Yeah, this is what happens when people go, he trashed my house. There was blood everywhere and guitar picks. And he used my... Uh, a uh, beautiful countertop as drums, and there's <laughs> chips everywhere, which happen. And this is what I say when I see the review. What? <laughs> Sorry. And then I get a new account. I don't call. They lie. What a And I'm Labana. You don't start. You just admit to it. You trash the place. You own up to it. You know. So um, here's Tim Dillon. I'm going to burn their and house And the fact down. that he didn't mention any of their real accusations in the Yes, review exactly. He just mentioned. Because me. you didn't get kicked out. You, they, you didn't get a bad review. for Like one time Mike uh, got a bad review yeah. for someone broke the door and he wasn't, he didn't, you explained it. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it's, you didn't get kicked out because the baked beans exploded. That would be <laughs> insane. You got kicked out because of the toilet stuff. The thing you did to their Bible, the thing you did to their family pictures where you scratched out all the kids' eyes, um, the cum, you know, the fish, <laughs> okay? Here. Fish is in the sink, but it is what it is. I paid a $400 cleaning fee. 400. You stupid cunt. Yeah, yeah. Jonan Mila. You fucking pigs. I'll burn your fucking house down, by the way. Anyway. I texted them that. I texted them I was going to burn Listen. the house down. And I sent them a gif of the Simpsons house burning. I'm like, I know where your house is. And they're like, are you threatening me? I'm like, let's just see what happens. I'm like, stay safe out there, you stupid desert dykes. Whoa. <clears throat> DDs. I will have God Hates Fags church outside of your fucking house every fucking day. I will call. Okay, so see, I can now understand why Airbnb would say we got to cut ties with this guy. But he is now trying to play victim. So here's the problem. All this is cool. If when Airbnb goes, yeah, I don't want your fucking Airbnb. 
That's what you do. You don't go, I got banned for nothing. I did nothing. I mean, this is what the whole right wing people, this is why they're such fags right now. Because you did all this stuff, you won't own up to it, and then you go, we did nothing. And then you're acting like the victims that you got into this whole business to out. Remember when you got into this business to out victim mentality and bullshit? You all do it. Why can't you commit the crime, do the time? <laughs> this would be like if Big Mike confronted me and go, I like it. I never said anything bad. You'd be like, Mike, you're lying through your teeth. <laughs> You've been making fun of Big Mike all the time. Why are you backpedaling now? This is backbeaning. Uh, who is the people in there? Who are the names? Westboro Baptist? Yeah, Westboro. And who are the names? Uh, oh. Fred Phelps, the Phelps yeah, yeah. family. Yeah, yeah. I'll get the whole Phelps family, not and the by cops the way, that went on. Yeah, they didn't do anything. Somebody goes, wait, because they said he left their house a mess, their desert D's for that? Yeah, desert tanks. Um, yeah, that also, all they did was say, left the house a mess, broke our cactus, our beautiful home was left a disaster. And he's like, I'll kill you! Because he's truly embarrassed. You know, he wanted to be known as the queen of comedy. Royalty, the <laughs> lavish Tim Dillon. And then he was very embarrassed. You know, this is all a reaction to his... Shame and embarrassment. I mean, no matter that how he was a filthy you pig. Are, someone telling the whole world that you clog their toilet is pretty embarrassing. Embarrassing. So this is a reaction to being embarrassed. So they kind of kicked his ass here with this. Let's see what's happening next. And Rogan, the rest of them that stay true. <laughs> I will get them out there every fucking night to fucking yell at the people renting your stupid wow. drug den. Anyway, so I responded to her by saying, "No one broke anything. Your house sucks." Because she said I was a bad guest. And then and then people are like, did this really happen? I said, yeah, it really happened. I said, the, few, oh, the wow, furniture but. is unusable. You're just going to read. This is fun. Does he read the whole thing? I think so, yeah. Okay, here. Listen to what he wrote to these people. <laughs> Which would be cool, again, if he didn't love it to death. Not artists. Your home is wildly overpriced. True. You begged me for a good rating and then trashed me. The cleaning crew complained about cleaning. Who's your cleaning crew? There were some dishes. <laughs> that is all. I don't really care about your reviewers. I don't rent out my home to strangers like an animal. Good luck with everything in the future. The place is a dump, and it looks like it was furnished by drug addicts, which I imagine you are. Please get the help you need. If you want me to take Jesus. you to an AA meeting or an NA meeting, I will. Go to Ikea. Get some actual furniture, which hopefully you can afford. Not everything has to be an art piece. And feel free to use the tartar sauce I left behind. Later, pig. And that's what I wrote to them on Airbnb and no response. And then, I, and, <laughs> I, and then I sent a few like that this. could have been considered quasi-threatening messages, wow. but they were not threats. They were an art piece, like your furniture. They're not meant to be sat on or taken literally. I was doing an art piece. Yeah. You see? It was all a metaphor. And it, ang it angered me because she shit on me publicly on Airbnb, which anyone wow. can see. Mm -hmm. Truly. That's what this is all about. And now I look like the bad guy. You are. I look like the bad guy. Jonah and Mila. Okay, do we have any more time codes from this one, or should we show his uh, his punishment? No, here? you should show his punishment. Okay, That's his punishment. Let's see. Uh, where is his ban from Airbnb? He deleted this post off his Instagram. Yeah, here you he go. He it. deleted this off his Instagram. So the big bad, it's all cool and bad, but not when you backpedal, delete, and apologize. So remember, this would all be cool. If he didn't delete it after being threatened, hold on, we're just waiting for it to load here. All right, here we go. Ha, ha, ha. He is houseless now. Here's Airbnb posted this himself. Hi, Tim. After a full review of an incident report we have received, we've decided to remove you from the Airbnb community. Very nice. This means you could no longer access your account and you could not create a new one. We determined that you violated the safety and fairness section of the Airbnb community standards, which you agreed to in the terms of service. You can read those uh, community standards at blah, blah, blah. And again, everybody, this is cancel culture, silenced again. <laughs> this is not a free speech issue, folks. This is a baked bean issue. And he posts this and he goes, look what he writes. Hold on, I don't know. He goes, here we go. Here we go. And then he he waged in the all comments out there's war. a second slide, I think. Yeah, he waged all out war on uh the people here. Let's see if I can pull those up here. Uh here, look at this. He sent them a message. Look at this. This is just begun. Begun. Welcome to the game. 
He regrets all of this. And remember, they like not only are they not comedians, they yeah, they're might just not true... even know that he's, he's a, comedian. a comedian. Yeah, they might think that he's just a complete unhinged psycho. Yes, and then he's sharing this to his story, showing the house on Instagram, so that all of his fans could target them. Okay. <laughs> so Airbnb got all this information. They go, oh my God, we're so sorry to the ladies. And they kicked him off. Let's see some of these Twitter statuses, if they still exist. A tweet. I was, look what he's writing. I was raped by the owner of an Airbnb. I have never shared this story publicly, but I've been inspired. So it's very funny. <laughs> but again, then he's complaining that he was banned. It's like, but you're breaking all the rules knowingly. Can't you? And Airbnb, you removed me because two witches lied on my name. You the know? point is, didn't we predict that he would get kicked off Airbnb for the being a The point slob? is, here we go. We predicted, <laughs> and I can't wait. Somebody find the clips from back in the day. How did we predict this? We predicted he'd be kicked off for being the pig he is. This is wonderful. So that's the Tim Dillon Airbnb story. Where will he stay? VRBO or whatever it's called? Or is that Tim, uh, Jake Paul's company? What is that play? <laughs> yeah, RNB. VRBO. I mean, there really are very few options. Airbnb has bought up the block. So this is really funny. I saw a lot of people saying, you could use my account. You could use, we are going to be ratting on all. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but you can't. It's not that easy. Airbnb is really tough to get back in once you've been kicked because you need your ID for everything. You know, like you can't just use a fake name and an Airbnb. You need to upload your ID. Your credit card has to match that ID. The ID sometimes has to be presented upon your stay. It all has to be checked out, so you can't just lie. And if you get caught lying, it's a federal crime. You could go away for 20 years. <laughs> like baked Alaska. Did you see that? I've been dying to read this.